Being a child of the 80s and 90s was nothing short of spectacular. We had acid wash jeans, we had body suits, we had Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, we had Crystal Pepsi, but most importantly, we had Saved by the Bell. I was definitely your stereotypical 90s tween. I participated in the school talent shows, choreographing dance routines to Ice Ice Baby or something by CNC Music Factory. I, w I was a Pop Warner cheerleader and would sit at the front of the bus to borrow the bus driver's intercom so I could sing Tiffany songs to the rest of the bus. <laughs> I was into everything pop culture and daydreamed constantly about not being in the small town that I lived in and instead being part of something cooler. And the coolest thing I knew of was Bayside High. <laughs> Saved by the Bell was my show, my dream. I loved it so much that I even watched the college years. <laughs> and, and nobody could melt my heart with a simple smile more than A.C. Slater. I mean, look at those dimples. Plus, he always had the best moves. I could definitely see myself next to him. But even more than me, my mom loved Mario Lopez. Several years ago, many, many years after I stopped watching shows like that, I mean, I never sat around just flipping channels after work with a glass of wine and stumbled upon a, re a rerun and left it on. Definitely not. I was a grown up. Anyway, my mom called me and told me about this dream she had. She dreamt that I married Mario Lopez. <laughs> the dream felt so real to her and she thought I should try and get in touch with him. <laughs> I think you two would really hit it off, she said, and encouraged me to track him down. My mom was a bit of a psychic dreamer. She once had a dream about a boy who had been kidnapped. She had a vision in her dream of where he was. She contacted the police and they didn't take her seriously, but they wound up finding the boy in the place where my mom had seen him in the dream. After that, every dream was considered gospel. <laughs> so now she was convinced. Nicole plus Mario for life. <laughs> I did not track him down because I'm normal. <laughs> and I was busy creating my entrepreneurial empire and having my own near brushes with fame. I created a product line called Sash Bags that caught on pretty rapidly. Fame, of course, was never my goal, but PR is a big part of sales. Being the face of my own brand was an obvious decision. Besides, I didn't have the budget to hire a famous spokesperson or even salespeople. It was me setting up my booth at every market, fair, and festival I could physically get into, calling up local media, telling them about my product, jumping in front of any camera that would allow me to tell other humans about my product line. The first media placement was huge. Now, I didn't personally appear on this one, but the visibility put my product and my company on the map. It was just 12 short months after launching my company. I was making breakfast, and my phone rang. It was a friend of mine who lives on the East Coast. I could barely get out a hello when she screamed, Kathy Lee is wearing your bag on TV! I flipped on the TV, but couldn't see it, because being on the West Coast, the last hour of the Today Show wouldn't start for another three hours. I went to my computer, and it was flooded with emails and orders. The showcase wasn't even very good. It was part of a lineup of ideas you wish you thought of, or something like that. <laughs> Kathy Lee put the bag on and made a vague comment like, oh, this would be nice if you were traveling, and then moved on to the next thing. <laughs> Just those few seconds of airtime changed everything. Sash bags were officially on the map, and I was officially hooked on media. So much easier than standing at a street fair trying to talk to everyone who walks by for 10 hours at a time. The media placements were fun and effective, spanning both local and national outlets. I had a nice write-up here in the Union Tribune. I've appeared on our local news a handful of times. There was the feature in Parade and Women's Journal, Huffington Post, Lifetime, a celebrity giveaway I did with Jay Leno. 
and a weird interview thing I did during the Pacific Southwest Emmy Awards. <laughs> and then <laughs> one day I got a call from Sharon Levin, the product segment producer at Extra. Someone was wearing a sash bag at Extra's cast and crew Christmas party. Sharon immediately knew that she loved it and wanted to know where she could get one. She tracked me down and wanted me to come on the show and do an audience giveaway. Of course I said yes. The next question was, which host I would like to appear with? Hmm. <laughs> when I told my mom, she was way more excited than I was. She brought up the dream from a few years earlier. This is your chance! She squealed. She didn't even care that she was married. She was all, love will find a way. The, the appearance almost didn't happen. Extra is filmed outdoors at Universal Studios. In inclement weather, they move the filming inside and they don't do product giveaways indoors because the studio audience is not there. The day before my scheduled appearance, it was raining and the forecast for the following day was the same. I got a call from Sharon letting me know that they might not do it and it was up to me if I wanted to come up there or not but that it would be a game time decision. The filming started at 11 o'clock a.m. and I wouldn't know until probably 10 o'clock a.m. if it was a go. But being on national television at 11 a.m. meant driving up to Hollywood the night before, getting a hotel, finding a makeup artist, getting camera ready, and then waiting to see if I get the green light. I went for it. I didn't get much sleep due to nerves, and I forgot to bring a hairbrush. But a friend who worked as a TV makeup artist met me at the hotel, calmed me down, fixed my hair, pampered my puffy face, which was showcasing my lack of sleep, and at precisely 9.50 a.m., the clouds parted. I am not even being dramatic. The, the rain clouds literally dispersed and quickly. By 10 o'clock a.m., it looked like a summer day. We were good to go. We drove over to the studio, unloaded all the giveaway bags, and I was introduced to Mario and the rest of the crew. <laughs> then I sat in the green room, which in this case was sort of an outdoor tent setup, nervously wondering if I should have prepared something more. This was my first time appearing on national television. This wasn't the garden area of KUSI. This was Universal <laughs> Studios. <laughs> I, did, I didn't send my bags over to the style editor or an anchor. I had to have my own face, my own words on live national television. What if I said something stupid? I recalled one time a few years earlier when I was doing an interview at our local San Diego CW station for a line of vegan bags I created where I bragged that the bags didn't include any animal parts. Really? There's not a better way to say that? <laughs> As I started to think of all the things I didn't want to say, suddenly the weird words were the only ones that I could remember. And then I was given the 60 second heads up that we were going live. I didn't know how to feel. All I could think was, I'm so excited. I'm so scared. <laughs> But as soon as the camera started rolling, I flipped into PR Nicole, and things went very smoothly. I nailed my intro and my brief demo. The only dumb thing I said was when I turned to Mario and explained, you can use it for travel, you can use it for shopping, you can even use it here at Universal Studios, and then quickly corrected myself. Well, maybe not you, but your wife. <laughs> nice recovery. Mario was very easy to work with, fun and professional, and even touched my butt once. <laughs> my segment was the last thing filmed so once we were done the show was wrapped and I spent a few minutes chatting with people in the crowd and signing autographs yes people wanted my autograph mostly tourists from the Midwest who think that anyone who's in front of a camera is a celebrity I helped the staff hand out the bags and had my picture taken with a lot of the recipients then I got in my car and drove home, and about halfway to San Diego, I heard my phone alerts dinging like crazy. I knew the appearance must have aired on the East Coast. I was getting orders in every minute, sometimes multiple orders per minute. I pulled over and called my parents and some of my friends. My head was buzzing a little too much to drive. I got back on the road when it slowed down for a bit, but then the next time zone hit. I did my best to ignore my phone and booked it back to San Diego. At home, we didn't have any cable. I asked the neighbors if I could come over and watch it on their TV. Here in San Diego, <laughs> Extra 
doesn't air until 8.30 p.m. So I was practically the last person in the country to watch it. Mario and I connected on social media. Shockingly, we didn't get married. <laughs> but his wife does have a sash bag, and she loves it. She said so on Twitter. <laughs> For five days after that appearance, we were doing cross promotions online, and then it was over. I haven't done any media appearances since then because my focus has turned to online marketing and what could possibly top Mario Lopez anyway. <laughs> I actually get far more people who recognize me from my Facebook video than any of my media. It's not uncommon for me to be at the Tupperware aisle of Target or pumping gas and have someone shout at me, hey, you're the sash bag lady. <laughs> yes, I'm the sash bag lady and an AC Slater fangirl for life. <laughs> That was Nicole McDonald.